This is going to be Genesis 29. And in Genesis 29, you know, Jacob's on his journey. He's about to meet Rachel. He's about to meet Leah. He's about to meet Laban. He's about to start working for Laban. And the payment is going to be a bride. And there's some twists in there. Some pretty funny twists. Jacob ends up reaping what he sows. But let's get right into it. Genesis 29 and verse 1. Then Jacob went on his journey. Now that's you. Your life is like a journey. And came into the land of the people of the east. Now on your journey, something similar happened to you that happens to Jacob. On your journey, you found the well. Now verse 2, it says, And he looked, and behold, a well was in the field. A well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. So maybe Jacob was looking for a well because he knew that is where his father Isaac got his bride. Remember that Rebekah was also found at a well. And remember in your journey when you found the well. In John 4.14 4, it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus Christ is the well. And if you are saved, then he dwells in you. He can give you that living water. Now notice also that a great stone was upon the well's mouth. At one time, Jesus Christ was in the tomb, and he had a stone covering it. In Matthew twenty-seven fifty-nine, And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. But three days later, the stone was rolled away. Luke 24, 2, And they found the stone rolled away, from the sepulcher. So this well, it had a great stone on its mouth. And it says in verse 3, And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. So they had the stone over the well's mouth to keep dust and dirt from getting in there and messing up the water. And another way you can look at this is to remember that Jesus Christ is the stone himself. In 1 Peter 2, 7 and 8, it says, Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. If you make the stone, Jesus is the stone, the stone of stumbling. If you make the stone the main thing, then no one can put dirt in your well of water. And the well of water, the well of water would be the words of God. You see, they took that stone and they rolled it over the well's mouth, well's mouth to keep dirt and debris or whatever else from getting into the water. If you make Jesus, the stone, the main thing, It'll keep dirt and debris from getting in your water. It'll make you it'll make it to where you don't get all messed up in your Bible. You see, when you believe the lies of people who say your Bible has errors, you're just rolling the stone off your well and leaving it off for days, and they're washing their feet in your drinking water. They're spitting in your drinking water. Genesis 29, 4 through 6, And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. Behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. Now you remember Laban, right? He's the one that is the sister of Rebekah, the one that Abraham's servant Eliezer met back there in Genesis 24. But now Jacob is going to find his bride at the same place that Isaac found his bride. Or 
Abraham's servant found the bride for Isaac, I should say. He found her at a well. When you met your bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, you came to the well and you drank the living water. In Genesis 29, 7 through 9, it says, And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together. Until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. Now notice, this is a good woman here. Someone that Jacob would want to marry. A good wife is a working wife. And I don't mean working on a secular job. I mean, you don't have to do that to be a good working person. Rachel is a virtuous woman. In Proverbs 31, 10 through 19, it describes for us a virtuous woman. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. In Genesis 29.10, Rachel, that it talks about, is one of those virtuous women. It says, And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Now, I'm not sure how heavy the stone was, but it looks like Jacob is trying to impress Rachel and roll away this heavy stone here. And up to this point, Jacob has seemed like a, a mommy's boy. But this can picture, this could be a picture of a man becoming a man, or being a man, and uncovering the word for his wife. You see, if that well's got water in it, well, water's a picture of the word, right? So he's rolling that stone away and uncovering it. He uncovered the water. So she could get water for the flocks. And if you're a man with a family, then you need to uncover the word for your wife. And then she can water the sheep. She can teach your kids. You could be, you can uncover the word for your wife. She can understand it. That way she can help teach the kids. At Genesis 29, 11, it says, And Jacob kissed, kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. So he's happy that the Lord made his journey prosperous. And Jacob told Rachel that he was his father's brother, that he, he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. So Jacob's mother, remember, is Rebekah, and she is the sister of Laban, Rachel's father. And this could picture how when you find a bride, make sure she's in the right family. And you only want a bride who is in the family of God. Uh, Jacob was sent there for a reason, so that he could get a bride from the right family. And when you pick out a bride, make sure she's in the right family. In Genesis twenty nine thirteen, and it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house, and he told Laban all these things. Men greeting each other with a kiss like this is appropriate in some cultures. And Paul even says in 2 Corinthians thirteen twelve, greet one another with a holy kiss. But it's probably not a good thing for you to kiss the men or the women during the shaking hands time at church. Uh, some people might take it the wrong way. Too much perverted stuff going on nowadays. You know, the men might think you go the other way, and then the men might not want you kissing all over, all over their wife. It might make for even more fights in church. 
But in Genesis twenty nine twenty nine fourteen, it says, And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. So Jacob had been on a long journey, so it makes sense, you know, he would stay a while. He's not just going on a week vacation here. He's going to, it says, he, st he abode the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldst thou serve me for not, for, you know, for nothing? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. You'll notice it is the second born that is considered the prize once again. You're going to see in this story. You see this pattern throughout the Bible. Abel was preferred before Cain. Isaac was preferred over Ishmael. Jacob preferred over Esau. And now Rachel, who's the second born, will be preferred over Leah, the first born. The second born is preferred. It's just like in your life's journey. Your second birth is better than your first birth. In your first birth, you were born a sinner. And in your second birth, that was what put you into the family of God. Your second birth is preferred by, more by far. Genesis twenty nine seventeen. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. The only thing beautiful about Leah was her eyes. Rachel must have been beautiful in every aspect, but it only points out Leah that she's tender-eyed. But it says in Genesis twenty nine eighteen through 19, And Jacob loved Rachel. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. But notice that Laban, he doesn't come right out and say that he will give him Rachel. And here you are about to see a great example of sowing and reaping. Jacob sowed wickedness when he lied to his father Isaac about being Esau. And now you're going to see what goes around comes around. Jacob can picture the Lord Jesus Christ here in a way. You see, because the Lord worked to get his bride, just like Jacob is about to work to get his bride. The Lord did all the work in his life and on the cross to pay for his bride, and that's what Jacob is about to work for. Genesis twenty nine twenty. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. I bet the 33 years the Lord suffered on this earth Seemed like a few days because he loved the church and he wanted to have his bride. Also consider that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. It's only seeming like a few days for the Lord. And when you love somebody and you're thinking about them or spending time with them, it makes time go by fast. Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. When you love someone and you spend time with them or for them, time seems to fly. When you are doing something that you love, it makes time fly. Genesis 29, 21, 22. Genesis 29, 21 through 22. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I might go in and to her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. One of these days, the Lord is going to say, Give me my wife. And the rapture is going to take place. And then we will go to the judgment seat of Christ and then a marriage feast. So Jacob's like, Okay, I've served. Give me my wife. Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in and to her. Now, this is where Laban is going to con the con man. Laban is just as deceptive as Jacob, and he led Jacob to believe that he worked seven years for Rachel. Yet he's giving him Leah. This reminds me of how when I get to the judgment seat of Christ, I need to have done my part to have the best bride possible presented to the Lord. I need to have done my part in that. You need to have done your part in presenting the best bride possible to the Lord. And I know that we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ and our per and we have a perfect standing in the Lord that never changes. But when it comes to our physical walk and what we're doing for the Lord on this earth in the flesh, um, we need to do our best to live righteously and present to the Lord 
wonderful works. And I'm going to do my part in, I'm going to try to do my part in presenting him gold, precious stones, and pearls, and not wood, hay, and stubble. Jacob here, who's in a sense picturing the Lord, he's being presented with something less. He got the less desirable bride, the bride that he didn't want. It says in Genesis twenty nine twenty four, And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his maid for an handmaid. So what if your wife also came with a servant? That would be pretty cool. You'd you'd really you'd really be set because she would be able to do the dishes and the laundry and mow the yard. And then you and your wife could just hang out all day. You wouldn't have to do any of that stuff. The grass needs cutting. You'd say, okay, Zilpa, that grass ain't going to mow itself out there. You know, the dishes need done. Your wife could yell, okay, Zilpa, go do the dishes. Uh, but brides don't come with maids anymore. Genesis twenty nine twenty five, And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Now, I haven't heard this talked about before, but Leah would have also been a part of the deception. Think about it. She knew good and well that he thought that she was Rachel. So she had to act like uh, she was Rachel. I mean, they probably had a similar sounding voice being sisters. They might have had a similar body, the way their body felt, things like that. Might have had similar way their hair looked or felt. So, you know, this does, it's, at first I thought, man, this is, this is crazy that Jacob didn't even know. But you have to think about it. This was uh, at night in the dark. They didn't have electricity. She probably had a veil on. So, he was tricked pretty easy. Jacob is beguiled, just like he tricked Isaac, his father. The supplanter, Jacob is the supplanter. Now the supplanter gets deceived himself. He was beguiled, just like the serpent beguiled Eve. Sometimes we think we can beguile the Lord. Think about this picture. You know, sometimes you think you can beguile the Lord. We pretend we are taking our part and presenting him a perfect bride. But we lie to ourselves and to God. He knows we are lying. But we like to pretend that he doesn't know. Just like Laban and Leah are pretending to present to Jacob the perfect bride. Don't lie to yourself and pretend that you're presenting the Lord with the perfect bride. Genesis twenty nine twenty six and Laban said, It must be not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Notice that Jacob was deceived in regards to the younger not coming before the firstborn. This is one of the best examples on reaping and sowing. This is because Jacob, the younger, deceptively stole the blessing from Esau, the firstborn. And the Bible is clear in Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to, the, to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You'll reap what you sow. In Genesis twenty nine twenty seven, Laban tells him, you know, if you want Rachel, fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years seven other years and genesis 29 28 and jacob did so and fulfilled her week and he gave him rachel his daughter to wife also so jacob really served 14 years for rachel and laban gave to rachel his daughter bilhah his handmaid to be her maid so jacob has two wives and two maids genesis 29 30 and he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. Imagine the jealousy involved in this home. Not only does he have two wives, but he loves one of the wives more than the other wife. And I'm not saying this is a perfect picture here, but it reminds me of how the Lord divorced Israel, and now he is focused on a Gentile bride, the church, and the Lord is using us to make the Jews jealous. 
In Romans 11, 11, I say then, have they not stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather that through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. How does that make you feel? The Lord's using you to, to make Israel jealous. Genesis 29, 31, And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Let this remind you that the Lord is in charge of opening and closing the womb, and when you kill a baby, you are going directly against what God allowed. He allowed the woman's womb to be open, to have the child in the first place. Who do you think you are going in there and killing the baby? Leah is hated. And Jacob is naturally going to want a son, so the Lord opens Leah's womb to balance things out. And it would make Jacob give some favor to Leah if she has him a son. Rachel is the favorite, so he leaves her unable to have children. Genesis twenty nine thirty two And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Reuben means behold a son. And this could picture behold the son Christ Jesus. These names picture the order of events. uh, Leah has seven sons by Jacob, and notice how their names, the meaning of their names is going to picture a perfect order of events. So Reuben's name means behold a son. This could picture behold the son, Christ Jesus. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Simeon means to hear. You beheld the son, now hear the gospel. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Levi means joined. You beheld Jesus, you heard the gospel, and now you're joined to the Lord. You're joined to Jesus Christ. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Judah means praised, and you are joined to the Lord, so now live a life of praise. Leah has four other children by Jacob in the next chapter. One of them named Issachar, meaning his reward will come. Don't forget about the rewards at the judgment seat, and you'll live a lot better Christian life. Zebulun, her next son named Zebulun, means dwelling of honor. Don't forget you will dwell with Christ in the millennium. Dinah, the daughter, her name means God has judged. Don't forget the wicked of all ages will be judged at the great white throne.